Hello marine biology students. In this video we're going to talk about waves and tides and how they impact both human and non-human life on the shores. In this last section of notes for this week, we will be discussing waves and tides. Waves are the results of wind blowing over the water's surface. The size of the waves depend how long and how fast the wind blows, with longer and faster winds creating a larger wave. The size of waves is also larger when the fetch, or the amount of open water, is large. So when we look at a diagram of wave formation over a water basin, Again, the larger the area the wind can blow over, the larger the waves that will end up being produced. And when we look at waves, the highest point of the wave is known as the crest, whereas the lowest point of the wave is the trough. The distance between two crests, or two troughs, is known as the wavelength. The time it takes for a wave to pass by a set point is known as the wave period. So when we look at a series of waves, again, the, the wave length is from crest to crest or trough to trough, and the wave period is the amount of time it takes to move one wave length. As the waves are arriving near the shore, the bottom of the wave drags against the bottom. This forces the wave to slow down, and the waves start moving closer together. They have a shorter wavelength, but this also drives the wave to be taller and taller. This is why waves start increasing in height as they start coming into shore. Eventually, the drag causes the wave crest to fall over the wave itself. We call this a wave break. And the resulting surf caused by the breaking waves can displace a lot of sand and end up affecting the organisms living at the seashore. For most waves, it's the same water molecules moving in a circular pattern and moving back and forth, and it's the energy that's transferred so that the water that's making up the waves as it approaches the shore is the water that had been near the beach in the first place. Now, we don't often think of it, but tides are actually a form of waves as well. But instead of being driven by the wind, these tides are driven by the gravitational pull of our moon. So tides play a role in ocean circulation. Circulation is driven by tides, which is the rhythmic rising and falling of sea surface levels. The tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon on ocean waters, and to a lesser degree by the sun as well. Waters on the side of the Earth closest to the moon are pulled towards the moon, causing a high tide. The opposite end of the planet will also have a high tide due to centrifugal force. Low tides will be perpendicular to high tides. So as we look at the diagram of the Earth and the Moon, we can see the gravitational force makes a high tide in the direction of the Moon, and centrifugal force makes a high tide on the far side of the planet. Most locations on Earth have two high tides and two low tides each day. This is known as semi-diurnal tides. The numbers and size of tides varies geographically.
and can be affected by bottom features and geographic features, such as islands, canyons, and reefs. The amount of difference between high tide and low tide is known as the tidal range, and this can also be affected by bottom features in the surrounding area. An important thing to realize is that the tidal cycle happens every 24 hours and 50 minutes because the orbit of the moon and the earth around their center of gravity is a bit slower than that of the rotation of the planet earth on its axis. So here we see a diagram of high tides at a specific point on the surface of the earth. It will alternate from high tide to low tide to high tide to low tide again. But again, at 24 hours, it hasn't quite reached back to its high tide yet due to the movement of the moon. Instead, it takes 24 hours and 50 minutes. When the sun and moon, both of which affect tides, are in line at times of the new and full moon, the tidal range is even greater. These are called the spring tides. Not because of the season of spring, but because of the concept of a spring of water. So despite their name, they happen each month, and it's a, a sudden bursting of water or spring of water, which is how it got its name, and not due to the season. Conversely, at the one-quarter moon and three-quarter moon, where the moon and the sun are not aligned with each other, these produce the neap tides. During the neap tides, you're going to have a lower difference between high and low tide, and neither will be as extreme as during the spring tides. So when sun and moon are aligned, high tide will be taller and low tide will be lower, whereas during a neap tide, the difference between high tide and low tide will be reduced. Now, organisms that live in areas exposed during a low tide will be especially affected during the spring tides. Movement of water during tidal changes results in significant mixing of water, which also affects organisms. And lastly, many marine organisms time their reproduction according to the tides. In the case of the California grunion shown here, the males and females actually beach themselves as high as they can during the highest of tides of one month to reproduce and lay their eggs within the sand. Then one month later, at the next spring tide, those eggs will be hatching and the young fish will be able to swim back to the ocean. This is the reproductive behavior of these fish. So that takes us to the end of the videos for this week. Next week, we're going to be talking about biology and life and how that relates to the marine environment. Thanks for your attention, and I'll see you in the next videos.